All information contained in this podcast is general in nature and does not consider your individual circumstances. You should consider the appropriateness of this information with regards to your individual objectives, financial situation, and needs. Welcome to Sharing More Than The Sheets, a podcast to help you and your partner make better financial and lifestyle decisions so that you can both focus on the things that you love. I'm your host, Michael Curry, financial planner, green thumb, husband, and just dad. This podcast is part of a short series to help and encourage current and potential small business owners to improve and grow. I will be talking to experts in their fields as well as successful business owners and we will be discussing what they do and how they do it so well. As a business owner, there are many opportunities to be able to take advantage of opportunities or to essentially claim on an entitlement that you may possibly have. Many business owners have heard of grants, very little actually know what they actually do or how they actually work or who even is entitled to them. So today I thought the best person to talk to would be Laura Dean from Laura Dean Consulting. Uh, To me, Laura is, I would say, the expert on the matter. Um, This is literally all she does um, and it's what she's done for quite a long time and Laura, thank you so much for being here. That's all right. Thank you for having me, Michael. Yeah, no, it's 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 a pleasure. As I said, like it's this is literally like when I think of grants, I think of you. It's it's an area that many people don't understand, and I was hoping today we could talk about the topic and yeah. you know t- touch on a what you do, but secondly, how businesses can, as I said, like take advantage of these opportunities. Because I mean, I know this isn't a nice word to use, but is it pretty much free money? It's, it's, it's no, I don't think um, it's free money. It's, it's money that you can receive, especially if it's government money, government funded money um, that can help you grow your business, but you have to, to do, do something for that. So you have to deliver a scope of work or a project um, and be successful or prove um, impact and measures to, um, to be able to keep hold of that money. If you don't um, deliver the scope of work, then generally at the end of it, which is called an acquittal report or your final uh Progress, uh, project report, pro- progress report. If you don't spend what you've told, said you're going to spend it on, then you have to return that money. So essentially, it's an entitlement that a business has that the government has put aside to say, okay, we want to help these businesses or these types of businesses achieve a particular goal in this area. It's yeah, I mean, it, so yes, entitlement um, or, or just funding, funding that gives an opportunity to grow your business to help you achieve your goals in your business. Yes. Okay. So that, that makes sense. Yeah. Yeah. So it, it's it's all about aligning your project or what you're trying to achieve, and your you know your business growth or your or your business plan, and your strategy and what you're trying to achieve, and, and aligning it with a potential grant opportunity. And that funding opportunity can come from from all different levels of government, but you have to align to to what that what their their grant bucket is for. It could be for boosting business, you know, bo- boosting female businesses. Um, that was a grant that came out this year. Or it could be, um, you know, remote and regional businesses or indigenous businesses. So you have to align to what the bucket of money is or that funding round is for. And then you have to also look at, are you eligible? So some of these um, these funding opportunities are for um, your proprietary limited businesses, which are, you know, your small businesses, your medium size, or they could be for non-for-profits. And then if it's not-for-profit, does it have to be um, a DGR status, which is a different kind of registration for charity as opposed to just being a non-for-profit? And if if your um, business or not-for-profit doesn't align with the criteria, then you can't, then there's no point applying because then you'll be non-compliant to that grant application. Okay. Okay. So, and and I'm assuming this is one of the hurdles that businesses need to um, overcome sometimes if they're they're looking at a not a hurdle essentially, but this is a criteria that they need to meet if they see a grant that they might want to apply for, to look at the criteria first because like what you said, sometimes sometimes they could be targeted towards only regional areas. Sometimes they could be. That's yeah, right. Th- yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. So I mean, I think the first thing to do would be, and I've got a list of um, top ten grant writing tips that I can um, give you for your listeners as well, if you like. But the first one is is define your scope. So what is it you're trying to achieve? Um, so for me, it's like an, under project management, your scope of works, what's your timeline, and, and what is it you're going to? What do you? What do you? What's your goals or your milestones? Um, and when you've got that, then you can go looking around for grants. And then the next part is, is looking is what are you? Are you eligible? So you're looking at um, 
and you read the guidelines, every grant that is released, whether it be in a private sector or in um, in government grant space, have, will have a guideline. So read the guidelines very, very thoroughly and um, see if you can, if you fit into the criteria, which is, is this the business that does it, you know, you've got to be earning under 300,000 a year or you, you have to employ more than 500 people a year. Do you know, there's all of these different things you could look at. I mean, location wise. Um, and then timing. Can you deliver that grant in the timeline that 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 um, that funding bucket, that funding pool, is um, has been allocated to? Sometimes they go, yeah, we've got three years. You can do your project over that time, or you need to finish it this financial year. Yeah, and essentially these are the, these are the rules of the grant. It's like you know to. Uh, the conditions, you know, to to, to That's correct. Yeah, to apply, you need to be this. To be eligible, you need to be this. And when you get it, yep. you need to do it within this particular time frame. Yeah, that makes sense. That that makes a lot of sense. And um, and just to as well, just to sort of cut cut in there for a second, where could yep. some of the grants come from? Um, is it mainly from federal government? Um, or are they state, local? Yeah, so yeah, that's a really good question, uh, Michael. So, so a um, majority of the grants in Australia will come from government, um, and that government is, you know, in, in three levels. So you've got your federal government, your state, and your local. So now all of those different um, levels of government will run their own um, granting pools, their funding pools each year, and um, so you can. So as a person, as a small business owner or a business, say, looking for a grant, you're going to want to look at those three places because those three places, each of those agencies will manage their own grants. Um, so you have to be looking in those areas. So federal um, is a good one for Grants Connect. Um, is a good way to, to register with them and get grants that are released nationally. You're going to want to register for different departments or agencies, we call them, um, and state level. So um, that could be, you know, your small business commission here in Queensland, um, Department of Justice and Attorney General do grants. Um, it's a matter of knowing what your scope is and then going looking and seeing what you potentially can um, and find in those spaces. And this is, what, this is where it gets really tricky. Um, and that's what I do for a living as I, as I research grants and know what it's about all every day. And then the other one, the other level, the final level is, is your local. So your local councils run their own grants. But if your business that is registered, your ABN is not registered underneath where that business is in that local council, then potentially you can't apply for that grant because it will only be for that area. Okay. So if a business essentially is, if somebody lives in one particular council area and their business is in another, I'm assuming that yep. might cause an issue as well? That's correct. Yeah. Yeah. So for an example, if you've got your business registered at Brisbane City Council, but you reside in Red uh, Redlands, um, it's where your business is registered and we operate from as to where that, that local council you'd be looking for grants for. Yep. That, that makes sense. And would I yep. be right in saying that the main reason a lot of businesses don't apply for these grants, apart from A, they probably don't understand them, um, would you say that the, the, the main thing would be that they don't even know they exist because or where to even look for them? I think so, yeah. So that's the main question I get from people and that's why they engage me is to go, where do I find them? Okay. Um, so the so the main one is, is, um, is yeah, where how do I get these ones? And then the other one is, is, is overwhelming. So yes, they've found a grant that they are eligible for. They meet the criteria. They want to start writing. But it could be, you know, a 15-page um, grant application that they need to fill out. Um, and that gets extremely overwhelming for people. So that's where I come in too. Um, before we move on, though, I just wanted to chat about the other spaces. So you've got your um, yes. your private grant space. So the private grants are your ANZs, your Commonwealth banks, um, you know, uh, Sun Super, a lot of super annuation businesses will ha launch grants. Um, mining companies, BHPs do grants and things like that. Um, so that's an example of private business that does grants, okay, that does, I'm sorry, releases grant um, opportunities. And then the, finally, it's your um, philanthropic which is the word I've always get, get um, philanthropy <laughs> space. Um, and they're generally, for an example, would be, um, I think straight up, you know, Bill Gates' foundation. There's a lot of philanthropy grants. Um, however, those grants really are majority are for a not-for-profit and charities, not for small business. Of course, of yeah. course. And, and I guess... The so, so as far as finding grants is concerned, I'm assuming it's best to like like what you said, contact these areas and contact yep. these grant funders, uh, whether it's federal, state, local, and, and have to, a chat to them. Yeah, have a chat. So, so let's say you've got um you've got 
you've come up with an idea, you've come up with a really gr- amazing idea that's innovative. So an innovative, a new business idea uh, product that you could launch that's going to change and change how things, how other businesses run and it's going to benefit, it's going to give employment, it's going to give um, it, it help reduce um, climate you know, with the climate changes initiatives that are going through. So it's going to be good for environment and it's going to be good for community and and, um, education. So you're going to look at the education space. You're going to look at the employment space. You're going to look at environmental, look at, you know, the Department of Environment. I'm not sure their full name would have grants in that space. So that's where you need to know your scope of work first and then drill down as to what, um, who your audience is then. Yep, that, that makes sense. And, and as far as like right, once someone's found a grant um, and they apply for it, what does the process normally look like? Um, so the process for the grant writing, and this is where I get a lot of business because people are overwhelmed or they just don't have the time because they're in their business and, um, and grant writing can take a lot of time, especially if it's deadlined. And, and there, there will be, all will have closed dates. And let's hope that you'd found that grant that you're eligible for, you know, four weeks out. But if you're a week out, um, and then that's a big scramble to gather that and finalise and submit that grant. And that's where that pressure comes from. And that's when they tend to engage me. Um, but what that looks like is is you have to you'll have to have insurances, okay? So this is just just be aware. Like some don't ask for that, but just if you see, prepare yourself that they're going to ask for your current insurance certificates, or your business insurance certificates, uh, workers' comp if you uh, you know if you have those, um, they're going to ask for your current financial statement, and they're going to ask for if you've got letters of support or if you're collaborating with other people partners. If you're working as a partnership, then you need to have those letters stating that especially if it's community groups, letters of support in that community group is really, really good. And you have all of those things prepared. But the biggest part is um, you cannot forecast what the um, the selection criteria will be. And those are weighted criteria out of 100. And there could be three questions, there could be six questions. And those have to be answered very, very precise and very clear in how you're going to deliver your project that aligns to what their funding round is. Because essentially... Um... For, for those that may not understand this concept, I'll just I'll just state the obvious. I yeah, guess fine. that you know, as far as a grant provider is concerned, or so I'm mean, a grant funder like the government. Yeah. If they have X amount of money in this pot to divide among a number of people, they need to prioritize. They need to look at the applications and prioritize them in order of which one's the most suitable, or not prioritize, yeah. but at least put them in sections. I guess that you know, yes, these are high priority, low priority. That's correct. Yeah, that's absolutely correct. So, so I've been a part of um, managing um, grants as the grant, the grantor and grant, so you, the grantee or the grantor. So the grantor manages the grant, releases the grant, goes here we go. We're, we're um, invites for applicating for applications. Please submit first thing, and then also I've been part of the evaluation panel for that. First thing is we check if it's not if they're compliant. Do, are they are they are their business set up? So before I've even read anything else, are they allowed to apply for this grant? Because that would also reduce my workload if I can not if I'm if I don't need to read the criteria because they're actually not eligible, then that's in another pile. And then it's all marked, so everything's measured and marked individually um, out of a hundred, and then it's drilled down from there as to whether that is a priority or it fits in with what we're trying to deliver as an agency. Um, because that's very, very important that it aligns to what that because it's 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 money that you're giving out for them to to um to to, to do a project for, but is that project something that we want to be um allocated to? Yes, yes. It, it reminds that's me right of school. Yeah. yeah, yeah. It reminds me of school when we used to get an assignment with a criteria sheet. Um, I was I was pre- sometimes I wouldn't even look at the criteria sheet, which is wasn't the right way to do it. Mm-hmm. But it's like they, they have a criteria, and essentially they're looking at something and they're, they're marking it off in a way, just saying, "Yep, that ticks that box. That ticks that one. Yes, That's this one's right. close." Yeah, yeah, that, yeah. That makes and sense. so, um, so a really big, really big part of um, government grant the grant space is that that everything has to be under. They call it probity. So probity is fair and just. Um, and it's, it's the same in procurement or if you're a preferred supplier, if you're doing tenders in that space, grants is in the same, falls under the same um, policy. So you always have more than three people on a panel and three people individually um, will mark each um, application that, that they've um, received. Okay, just to have that, I guess, that, that accountability and that... Um... Yeah, you want to remove any conflict of interest yeah. um, and you want to make it so that it's very fair and there's no there's no giving money away to your friends, things like that. So that's really what we're trying to avoid. Yes, of course. 
These podcasts have been brought to you by Better Financial Planning Australia. To book a free 15-minute phone chat, visit betterfinancialplanning.com.au. You mentioned when you're going through your 10 tips, you mentioned guidelines, eligibility, timing. Sorry, I didn't mean to cut you off. Well, I did, but um, sorry, I didn't mean to lose your train of thought. Um, What would you say would be the, I guess, the the next the the next point or the, the the next tip for somebody applying for a grant to consider i think it's really important um so if you're so understand the language right so if you're so you know your audience so you know who your um the grantor is so with whoever that's an let's say it's an agency but when you read the grant guidelines, you'll see how the, the language they use in that guidelines. You use that similar language when you're responding in your application. Don't use any um, acronyms or jargon, okay? So when I'm reading your grant response and you've abbreviated something that I have no idea about, I'm going to mark that down because I don't want to go and look for what that means. That makes sense. I think I think a really good tip here, though, guys, for everybody, is that if you're going to write, if you're writing a 15-page grant application and you abbreviate your business and it's ABC on that first page. You you can't put you can't abbreviate on any other page. It has to be full on every page, because some evaluation panels will split up the pages and give them to separate people. So if wow. you've abbreviated it on page one and page five, sorry, if you put it in full on page one, then put in brackets ABC like you do. That's that's the way you you do it. And then on page five, you've put the abbreviation and put it in full. But a totally different person could be reading page five. Yes, yes, I didn't even think of that those kinds of things. Um, if, we, if we're talking about tips, I think a really good one here for everybody is, is, is um, and this is where a lot of people lose money on, is insurances. So you might have to be um, meet a certain minimum amount of insurance per liability claimed. And if you're only got a $5 million professional indemnity insurance and they're wanting $20 million, that's a lot of money to get that $15 million increase so that you can prove that in your application, which you might not be successful in. So what I always do is go, I would attach the, what I have so I am insured because we all should be insured as business owners. Um, I am insured, however, on success, on success, I will increase to 20. So instead of, because that could be about $300 you're paying out to increase your insurance policy. Yeah, yes. So, so does that make sense? Yeah, it does. It does. It does. Yeah, and, um, that's, and that's because that's, that's, that, that's money that you're paying out for increasing insurances to apply for um for funding that you potentially might not be successful in. So I always just say to people, just note that you I acknowledge that, that this is the equal requirement. Those requirements will be met on um, contract award when once successful. Or whatever the words are, if you need them, come to me and I'll give them to you. Yeah, no, that, that, that makes sense. And, and these are the small things that a lot of people wouldn't be aware of. And if you don't know, you don't know. Yeah, yeah. As well. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, so, so know your audience. Don't use acronyms or jargon, um, especially because you don't just assume everything's in plain English. Just assume that they don't understand what those acronyms are. Um, it's the first time they've ever come across them, um, and that will be helpful for the marking. It's, it's very, very clear and concise. Um, and the other one is really important: is if you've been if you've been given two thousand words to answer um, one selection criteria, but it takes you six paragraphs to answer that, then that's quite painful, especially for somebody evaluating, you know, thirty to fifty um, or more in some cases. Um, grant applications so I just say to everybody um, so some people want to write their own and that's absolutely fine that's this they write their own and they'll come and ask me to review them so I'm not writing I'm just reviewing for them and generally I'll just say you haven't answered the question in the first two paragraphs you've done it on the sixth paragraph just scrap it you don't have to fill 2,000 words you just can't go over 2,000 words but answer the question in the first two paragraphs that they've asked you Yes, okay. So it's essentially get to the point, really. Get just to the point, just... especially if that person's got to read 50 of the same applications. Yes, and when you say keep it simple, I also think like what you're saying there just makes me think of um, keeping it easy for the person marking it to to yes, understand you're... what you're trying yeah. to say as well. Give them it, help them out, yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> don't let them, don't make them dig for it. No way. Um, if, I'm de- if I've got to dig... Um, I tend to mark low. I'm sorry. That's just because if I if I haven't got them, if I haven't got you haven't got to the point, um, which is very clear. I've asked you the question. You haven't got to that point. Then then you get marked down. So um, another part of that space is going. Okay, what's your timeline? So there'll be a milestones or timelines they call them. And what are you going to deliver? Like let's say it's a 12 month project. If it, there's nothing wrong with using a Gantt chart in an Excel spreadsheet because um, you don't have to go and get a Gantt chart um, license to 
to do it like a project um, plan do and project delivery space but you can do an excel spreadsheet on the gantt chart showing you know january to december these are the months this is what we're going to deliver this is where we're going to deliver it and you just just put that into your um project delivery so timing it's um and then that timeline because i'm assuming some grants as well depending on the project but some grants Mm. could be like a, a project over a period of time instead of just like a single thing like purchasing a vehicle yeah, yeah. So you'll be lucky to get a lot of grants purchasing vehicles. It'll be you're purchasing a vehicle inside of running um, a program, launching a program in Queensland. So you need that vehicle to launch that program. The program is the impact, not the vehicle. Definitely. And, and that all ties back to the guideline, you know, and the, the, right. the purpose, yeah. the purpose of the grant. That'll be right. There'll be a list of um, what's not um, funded or what's not eligible. Um Immediately, it'll be, and one of the one of the ones will be um, grant writer costs. That's pretty common, as they don't want any people to be paying up a grant writing costs. So it's 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 a hard one, but for grant writers, that that has to come out of the, op, the um, business operational costs up front, and that's just the risk that they have to take for, to get that successful grant through. And what are the benefits of using a grant writer? You've mentioned some already. So you know, some people find it too complicated to apply for them sometimes, and you're better off paying someone than. And in getting a grant, they're not applying at all and not getting yeah. a grant. Um, what else? And I'm assuming a time is another one. Um, you know, the, the time involved for a business owner to sit down and put a grant application together. Yeah, you know, I think a um, really good one there is an example of a grant that I wrote for someone um, a couple of years ago. She was absolutely amazed that I wrote her grant in in uh, in one week, um, whereas three years earlier, because it was a three year contract. Uh, three years earlier, it took us six weeks to get that grant written and submitted. So those are the kinds of things um, is that you're using an expert and that expert knows how to to deliver those questions and and, and get the answers on the paper very, very um, uh, quickly, but concisely as well. So you know what the, you know what they're going to be looking for and when they read it and when they evaluate it, evaluate it. But you're not just doing the writing the grant. You're also um, part of like you know your selection criteria is budget. So it's developing a budget that matches your timeline or your or your scope of works. And then and then um, for grant writers, I think a really really good one is as, as for them as they um, will pull out measurables or impact. And impact's a big word around the grant space. Is okay, we're going to give you this money, but how many people is that going to impact, or what communities is that going to impact, and how are you going to measure that? How is that going? How are you going to measure that success? Um, and this is where people fall down if they don't understand what to write, how to write that. Yes. And you mentioned that people, uh, you know, businesses can either contact you to write their grants for them and, you know, manage the whole process um, yeah. or option B, and this is obviously subject to your schedule as well because, well, the first point is subject to your schedule because I know how busy you are. But the second point okay. is um, you could be open to checking people's grants and, and reading them for them and essentially I, pointing them in the I'm right doing- direction. Yeah, absolutely, Michael. I've been doing a lot more of that lately because a lot of people, if you arm them with the right information, like we're just doing today, then they've got some confidence to write their own grants, but they're not just want to get it checked before they hit submit. I've been doing a lot more of that lately. It reduces their cost for them as well um, because reviewing and as, as opposed to writing is less time for me to do. Um, and it also, I like doing it. It gives me, it changes for my, it, it changes my workload. Um and I don't have to. I don't have to write it. So I'm just reviewing other people's work, and that's pretty. It's, it's good to make some do something different. Bit of variety in my day, basically. Yeah, and not just that, but I mean, I'm sure for you, it's such a nice feeling helping a business, you know, get access to this to, to funding that they wouldn't have gotten if they didn't apply for these things. And I'm sure. Have you got any stories you can tell us, like any success stories or any situations where you know this they, a business really, really took advantage of this opportunity and, and made it something? Yeah, I think a really big success. I won't name the, um, it's a non-for-profit um, up here in Queensland. I won't name them for, for confidentiality, but it was very successful, um, was getting them some funding um, across a, a three-year contract. So they've got funding for three years to run their charity um, within the community. Um, and that's far reaching because that's, um, that they help and educate um, a lot of communities and support those people. Yes, of um, course. Yeah. So that's, that was, um, that's great to be able to help them achieve that, um, especially when it was in a very, very competitive space. So there was a lot of people applying for that three-year contract. 
Yes. And even um, as a, as a small business, I'm assuming a business can undertake a particular project and go down a similar path as well. Yeah. Oh yeah, absolutely. And the other thing is, it's like, you, if, if you don't think if you, if you're not sure if you're a, st- a small startup, just start small then and get a small business startup grant or a digital grant or get one, get one for your website. Start working and growing step by step. You, just, you don't have to just go for one grant and be successful. You can go for multiple grants depending on criteria. Some grants will say that you can't apply for this grant if you've got funding already, especially if it's under the same agency. But you can go for multiple grants and grow your business step by step that way. Um, and think of not just national grants or, or state grants, there's international grants as, and as well that I'm across, um, that I've been you know, keep, keeping track of and when they come out, because grants will come out sometimes quarterly, sometimes annually, and we, they call them grant rounds. Yeah, sorry, Mark. And the, and the other message is probably don't give up, because I mean, just like applying for jobs, uh, you know, I think that's you, know, really you won't good always message. get approved straight away. Um, and that's what I was going to, to, yeah, that's what I was going to come down to, as, as always, um, if you're unsuccessful, ask for why you're unsuccessful. And if they say low pro, low priority, which is pretty common this year, is um, you're not, you know, you're just not a priority. Okay, great. However, can you tell me what inside my grant made this low priority so that I can avoid that next time? And you, there's nothing wrong with asking and pushing for that and getting that in writing even, and um, and trying to go back to them if it's a scripted answer because there's a lot of scripted answers and they just want you to go away. No, that, that um, makes sense. But yeah, I reckon, and, and don't not do that. And you wouldn't believe yeah. how many people come to me and go, okay, and my first question to somebody is, have you already got funding? No, have you already have you applied before? Yes, um, why were you unsuccessful? I don't yeah. know. And I was like, well, you should have asked because now that, that was two years ago. The moment's gone. You should have asked because that will help you um, better write later, a better submit another application. Yeah, I agree. Because it could be like literally answers were too short or you weren't relevant or I mean, yeah. it could be the most simplest thing that it's like it's like when I help clients with their financial situation, sometimes yeah. it could be the most simple mistake, but because it's repeated over and over again, it creates a bigger issue or it stops them from achieving their goals. And I guess this is a similar thing. If, if you don't know, you don't know. That's right. So it's really important to get that feedback so that you can, and if you don't understand that feedback, and I say get it in writing, so email them. There's always an email on every grant application, um, yes. grant process, write to them and go, okay, I was unsuccessful. Why was that? Oh, okay, what can I, well, what can I do to improve my application in the future? And then use that and give that to, if you if you need to give that to a grant writer, then instead of the grant writer, this is what we missed. Okay, great. Give me your application from the past. We'll look through it. I can see where you were wrong. You missed, you didn't, you didn't, your, your money, your figures didn't add up. And that's tricky figures and budgets, um, can, especially if there's going to be co-contributions in that grant. Yeah. But co-contributions, guys, doesn't have to be your money out of your bike pocket, out of your small business. It could be contribution of um, your time as a project manager to deliver that project. Okay. Yeah. So there's heaps of different ways. So I suppose, I suppose, yeah, working with a grant writer who has been in that space with, you know, with that expertise is going to help you um, get it across the line and be successful so that you can get your business growing. Yeah. Laura, thank you so much for your time. Like it's, uh, it's, I mean, I've learned a few things just talking to you now about oh, this cool. topic and, um, you know, I'm sure so many people that have listened to it have either learned something or they're more motivated to actually start applying for grants, you know, and yeah, great. Um, if anybody wanted to get in contact with you, uh, what, what would be the best way for them to do that? Um, just, um, so I've got my website, so it's lauradeanconsulting.com.au, which has got a contact page through there. I've got the old Facebook page under the same name um, and LinkedIn, but most people just ring me. So my mobile is 0410-571-664. And I'm, I'm happy to, you, we don't have to commit to me writing your grant for you. If you want some queries, you want a review done, or you just need some um, knowledge around something, I'm happy to help out. This is what I enjoy doing, So and that's why I do it. Yeah, no, thank you, Laura. I could tell, I could honestly tell. And, um, and lastly, just to finish off with our dad joke of the week, I uh, didn't tell you about this, but um, <laughs> <laughs> this is actually my son's joke. Uh, did you hear about, um, sorry, my brother's joke, Justin. He said it to me on the weekend. I was like, that's actually pretty good. So uh, I don't know if you heard about the two men that um, stole a calendar um, from a shop and they had to split it halfway and separate two different ways to get away from the police. No, I didn't know about that. No? Okay, yeah. Um, they both got six months. Oh, my God. 
<laughs> yeah, Good work. I, I, I'm going to have to tell that one to my husband now. Oh, please he's do. Into, please he's do. into these dad jokes. Oh, good, good, good. Yeah, it's uh, my ju- my brother Justin said it to me. I was like, actually, that's pretty good. Like, it's it is. yeah. And I mean, I Google dad jokes, but the thing is, <laughs> the best ones are the ones you actually hear from people. So yeah. it's yeah. Cool no, stuff. Laura, again, thank you so much. Um, it means well, so much to have you on this, and it's on this on this show. And I really, really hope and encourage people to contact you, and you know. Or just Only get on and start looking. To try. That's yeah, it. get on and, and try and see if you can get some funding. I mean, and why not? You know, if they can help your business succeed and grow in the future, yep. then then it's a great opportunity to do that. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Cool. Thanks for joining us on sharing more than the sheets. Please make sure you subscribe to be updated with future episode releases, and feel free to share this episode with any friends or family that you think it might benefit. Please visit us at sharingmorethanthesheets.com.au to submit questions or requests for future podcast topics. These podcasts have been brought to you by Better Financial Planning Australia. To book a 15-minute phone chat, visit betterfinancialplanning.com.au.